<laughs> Welcome to Talk to Trev. How are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Doing thanks well, for having thanks. us on. And it's an absolute pleasure, man. And, and just so that anybody doesn't know, bring to bear, okay, a UK symphonic metal. Okay, this, this is, this is going to be a tricksy now, right? Because I've only just gotten into symphonic metal. Um, and my first, <laughs> you're probably going to say, yeah, I'm not surprised. My first experience was Nightwish. Now, I mean, uh, well, I, you see, this is the thing. I don't know if it was because the, the, the level of expectation now is like, you know, so ridiculously high. Yeah. That I'm just thinking like, how can you? Call, that the, the starting point for many and the benchmark for all, basically. Well, there you go. That's, that's absolutely perfectly said. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. But how did the name Bring to Bear come about? So the name itself is actually derived from the saying to bring something to bear. So to act with force upon something or make something happen that you really want to have happen. And that's actually the primary meaning of it is, you know, to make something happen that we ourselves really want to have happen, which is this musical adventure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different kind of name. It's, it's, do symphonic metal bands have generally middle to long names or is it just like one, you know, one title for a, for a, for a band? I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, I've only just started getting into symphonic metal. So I'm really like, I mean, I can't even name you five. I only know one that's Nightwish. So mm. is Evergrey. Okay. Is, is that, is that a symphonic metal? We, we, we didn't really, elements. Yeah. We didn't really consider um, what would be traditional for symphonic metal. So whilst that is the, a label that we've attached to ourselves uh, for, you know, for the release, just so it's inf you know, informative to the audience, um, we bring in quite a lot of different elements. And from where we started, we definitely didn't necessarily go through symphonic metal bands and try to find something similar. We just put a couple of ideas together and tried to pick one that was um, you know, rel relevant and relative to the kind of style that we're going for. Right. Okay. So yeah, I mean, in line with that, we're actually probably more on the folk metal side. So symphonic folk metal is a right. more accurate description. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean that that sort of makes makes a little bit more sense. Um, like I said, I'm only just getting into this, so it, it's it's just like a whole new world. It's like a rabbit hole of absolute madness. I was one of the old yeah. school types, you know. Keyboards in metal? I don't think so. No, no, it's not going to work. No, no. That's and not here we are with accordion in metal. Exactly. I mean, there's there's flipping flutes and all sorts of things. I mean, it's amazing. And there is something tribal about the sound of symphonic metal or folk metal that, to me personally, just sort of like pulls me. Like you get you're getting pulled in, and further in and further in, and, and next minute, boom, that's it. You're hooked. And that's what I'm finding right now. Yeah. Is like it. it like I said earlier, it's, it's a rabbit hole of just, yeah, it's, it's mind fuckery. I think that's the, the best possible thing that I can think of to say, really. I mean, what, okay, so you guys started out as sort of like punkish vibe, is that correct? Before going into symphonic metal? Um, almost. So we, we play, us to play in a band called The Filthy, Filthy Spectacular, uh, which is a gypsy punk band. Right, um, okay. So that's a, that's a whole different project. Uh, we met through that band. We realized we both have an interest in heavier music. So, uh, the, you know, Gogo Bordello's, sorry. Filthy Spectacular sounds like Gogo Bordello quite a lot or like similar, you know, light but Irish punk or I guess um, Jock Murphy's kind of thing. Right, yeah. We realized we like metal. We wrote a couple tracks which weren't really in the same style as Filthy. So we thought, oh, well, we can make this even heavier, lean into it rather than try and put a square peg in a round hole. And we splintered off this side project. And from that point, when we realized that we we're going to splinter off and create a new band, um, we gained a lot more freedom in deciding what exactly we're going to bring into those elements. Wow. It's, it's like alchemy, man. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I mean, with a lot of bands, you can put a very different music in one project, but it's quite key that it's, I think that it's relatively similar in a way, just like because you're setting an expectation, right? So you have some sort of range that you have to set. We're going to sound 
not exactly the same because you don't want to release the same song 50 times, right? Right. But um, you're going to have a range of, okay, is this the same project? Is this changing so drastically that really should be labeled as a different band? Um, so yeah, this was at the point where we really should have been labeled as a different band. So we just splintered it off and leaned into the, the change. So then how, how did the rest of the, um, the band members then get involved in? Uh, what we did there is we worked on some songs together, Fristo and I, and um, just did some short style demos, as we called them. They were about a minute and a half to two minutes long. And we uploaded those onto a website called Bandmix so that people could listen to them and view the profile. And Bandmix is a website a bit like Facebook for musicians where right. you can see what people are um, looking for or what they play and you can connect with them so once we'd uploaded on band mix we contacted some people to see if they'd be interested in joining if they liked our demos um, we also posted some ads on facebook in various groups did you ever get sort of like negative comments on stuff like that on, on those kind of social media you know well it's not really essentially social media but you know were there haters there no. haven't been any um, directly hating. There have been a few who've said it's not for them, but they were like generally just took oh. it. To, you know, it's 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 a good sound and whatever you know, but not for them kind of thing. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. for those kind yeah. of platforms, because it's specific to musicians, you're you're seeing musicians, you're seeing projects. If right. somebody sees sees it and isn't interested, there is no reason for them to get in touch with us and be like, "Hey, yeah. heard your stuff." It's shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walk on. That seems like a waste of time for anybody, right? So yeah. the only people who got in touch with us were either people who are now part of our band or guys who we, for some reason, didn't feel were suitable or people who got in touch with us, listened to more, listened to what we're aiming to do with those demos, which may have ended up being different than what they expected and um, then decided that it's not for them. So, I mean, if you guys are recording demos and all this sort of thing, is there a plan, you know, like... You, <laughs> Let's say Bring to Bear goes on for the next 30, 40 years or whatever. Is this, you're keeping all this, this stuff for, you know, like B-sides and rarities and all that sort of stuff to release one day? Or is it just, no, it's just for you guys? Um, we are trying to deal with that at the moment. So myself and Ian are very critical of each other and of just the music quality in general. Um, so we're trying to decide whether when something gets rejected and, and isn't worked on immediately, um, does it go straight in the bin to never be looked at again, or are we going to try and recycle it? And at the mm -hmm. moment we're leading on to the straight in the bin. So if it's not, if it's not good enough for right now, there's a, it's not likely there's a comeback in later. Wow. Yeah. Stupid. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty ruthless, man. It is. Cause you never know. There might be an enough. awesome riff in there or something, you know, but that's a right. If it's not good enough for right now, then, it's that combination of elements. So there might be one element within it that is good enough to be used in another way, but that particular combination is not necessarily going to be good enough right now. So it would need significant reworking to be yeah. used again. Yeah. Okay. So, so then if those don't make it on, how do you then come up with, because your EP, when is it, when is the, what is the EP title firstly? And when is it coming out the EP? Never mind, never mind the, the Shadow Ruse, which is out now because of um, <laughs> internet time. We are basically Friday today right now. <laughs> we're, not, we're not Tuesday today. We're Friday today upon releasing this video. Um, so, so what is the, the title of the EP and when is the EP coming out? So the EP doesn't have a title yet. We, we are just discussing a few options for that but it will be released probably around the middle of September. Wow. Okay. And tracks, how many? There'll be three just a, tracks. Yeah, just okay. the three. So um, two, two originals and one cover on the EP. Oh, what's the cover? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say. Should we not reveal say. That? <laughs> uh, we'll keep that under wraps for now. Yeah. Good man. Keep the suspense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep the anticipation. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool, man. Okay. Uh, well, sorry, yeah. you said the EP title is going to be? Oh, you didn't say uh, there is no there is no title. Wake up, Trev. Come on. To be to be determined. Uh, to, to, to be determined. Yes. Yeah. TBD. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
So then the Shadow Roos is out now on all digital platforms. You guys know exactly what to do. Get out there and follow the band and get onto all the socials. Everything will be in the description below and do all that sort of stuff. And, and basically stream the hell out of the song, people. Yes, you guys, have you guys got a band camp and all that sort of thing? Is it also going to go up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, We've cool. We've got so, Bandcamp and that should be live with the release of the single and um, everything will be on there as well. Okay, and I think if, if there's a Bandcamp and if I know Devo in, in South Africa, with, yeah, in South Africa, he's going to have me, the, he's going to get me the link and I'll put the link in the description below. So people that are watching this, go to Bandcamp first. That's where the artists actually make the money. Never mind the streaming platforms. Just get onto Bandcamp and buy the gear, the merch and play and buy the songs the money goes to the artists more so than streaming so do that first okay so what were your influences Much appreciated i oh, know uh, dude i know how this works but i do distribution for artists so i <laughs> mm. streaming platforms man it's it's such a a double-edged sword because it's so brilliant but it's it's maniacally twisted that the artists get absolutely yeah. nothing it's like it's zero fantastic point zero listener, zero two not, a stream or something it's, it's I mean, our, our priority really is for people yeah. to, to hear us. So, um, well, that's you know. the joy about the platform, isn't it? Yeah. Streaming platforms. Yeah. It's it's a wonderful marketing tool, but to to earn a living off that, no, definitely not. And, and I've said this repeatedly on on many of my other podcasts. Screw the the streaming platforms for making money for marketing. Brilliant, but other than that, no. Bandcamp, yeah, absolutely. That's that's where you'll get both, and in abundance as well. So, um, yeah, description below will be the link to um, bring to bear. Um, so influences, let's hear them. I mean, that's, that's the toughest question that we get. And the reason behind it is all five of us have quite diverse influences, but then we end up having to narrow down the ones that are really relative to the band. Um, so I guess on, on the metal side for myself um, is quite a lot of kind of traditional trash metal. So Metallica, Pantera, quite a lot of grunge that I grew up with. And you can kind of see that reflected in some of the, um, the vocal tracks and the way that the vocals match with the music. Right. Chris, you, you, you play guitar. How long have you been playing guitar for? Um, 20 years now, about 20 years. What accent is that? Uh, I'm Bulgarian, but I've, um, I've lived, this is the fourth country I'm living in. Uh, wow. and I mostly traveled with my family when I was a teenager. So, the accent's been muddled completely, <laughs> unrecognizable. <laughs> Euro a, European mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, European mongrel. You said it, not me, man. Your words, yeah. not mine. Eh? I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a nice guy. Don't, don't hurt me. Um, Ian, well, what's your influences, man? Um, well, musically, my influences are Nightwish and a whole variety of symphonic metal bands. And then also a lot of folk metal and Viking metal. Um, uh, you may have heard of Corby Kleine and the Monomath. Yeah. Yeah. Then um, traditional folk music and some film scores, things like that. Film scores, wow. What's your favorite film score? Yeah. Oh, single <laughs> film score is hard to say, but composer is definitely Hans Zimmer. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Fair enough. He knows what he's talking about, folks. He knows what he's talking So, <laughs> So, I mean, this... Bring to Bears is literally a year old, not even a year old. Yeah, we're a year old since we officially decided to start the band. But in terms of how long we've had members in the band besides us two, it's been about seven or eight months. Right, jeepers. I mean, this is quite a sharp climb, isn't it? Uh, to, but then again, you guys have played in, in, together in a band. So you, I guess you kind of feed off each other music-wise and, and collaborate. And, and how, do you keep, how do you guys come up with the music? How does that happen? You just wake up one morning and have a cup of coffee and it's like, boom, that's it. I, I expect the creative process is, is different. Um, we've agreed to um, not be, not be uh, putting forward complete tracks really as much as possible. So they, all the things you put forward are in a demo form. And that links in with this kind of um, really 
harsh criticizing process that we work through because if you put something forward it's a complete song it's kind of your baby and people start ripping it apart and moving things about Ooh. cutting and adding and then it feels painful so um <laughs> Feel, we're trying like to a smile on his face when he says that it feels <laughs> painful <laughs> yeah yeah the, the evil smile that Ian's got on there um, <laughs> so you know it, it's dif- difficult to write a track with the amount of instruments that we have to get the jamming in a room so we usually need to have some idea some basic outline of what we're trying to make happen um, but it's also shouldn't be one person writing it into complete because then it splits the different directions style wise and um, doesn't end up with a coherent feel. So somebody writes a demo, just probably about two minutes long with first chorus, some other riffs in there, puts it forward. Um, and then the rest of us kind of dig into it, make them feel sad, change it around. <laughs> but also in terms of instrumentation, we are very respectful of each other's particular skill. So when Christo writes a song, he won't tell me what to play on accordion. He'll say, this is the guitar riff that I've got and the vocal line that goes with it. Now add some accordion or strings or something to it that you think is going to work. And I'll do the same. When I write a song, I usually write it from the perspective of accordion and I'll send it to him and say, give me a cool guitar riff on this. Wow. So how, how did the accordion come to be then? Um, in terms of yeah, you, how did it get yeah, invented? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a history lesson. Come on. No, no, no. I mean, you know, <laughs> how, did, how did you um, sort of how write, did, I want that? Yeah, well, um, I actually played guitar for quite a few years before starting Accordion. Right, and, okay. And I was listening to bands like Nightwish and other symphonic metal and general Scandinavian metal at the time. And through that, I naturally came across Korpiklani, which is folk metal from right. Finland. And the more I listened to them, the more I found myself drawn to the accordion in their music. It just made it so fun and interesting and unique. One day I woke up and I literally did just say to myself, I want to learn that. Wow. Jeez. I mean, so I Googled the nearest teacher and contacted Wow, you them. actually went like full on head first into it. Yeah. Jeez, and never look stones back. on you, man. <laughs> Fucking hell. How about that? Yeah, you see, I... yeah, And I'm well, so glad. Wow. It's just such a fun instrument, and there's so much you can do with it. Look at that smile on his face, man. It's a man that is happy. <laughs> yeah. That is... Oh, the, yeah. That's awesome, but it does add a different element to the music as well. And, and like I said beforehand, I, I was very much old school, and, and keyboards and metal is a no-no. And, and then all of a sudden, I'm hearing <laughs> accordions, flutes, and fucking harps and, and whatnot else. And it's just like, it just brings a whole new level. It's just layer upon layer of just different sounds. And, and the ears kind of just perk up and go, oh, all right. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, it's like an awakening. That's what it was like for me anyway. Maybe I'm just talking shit, but anyway. No, it makes a lot of sense. It, it's one of the writing challenges that we have because we want that depth and that um, you know, melodic mm. richness. But part of the, uh, I guess, the challenge of writing Maori death metal is if it becomes too much, it takes away from the edge of metal. So kind of mm. coming from the old school um, stance of, you know, you want the punch, you want the raw aggression. Um, if you put too many melodic elements in the overpower, the, I guess, the core of it, then it's, it stops, it loses the energy. So we're trying very hard to maintain that balance. I was just going to say the balance to maintain um, momentum and energy and, and in symphonic metal can't be all that easy because like you're saying there's so many different elements and layers to it you could get muddled and lost in it couldn't you it's, it's a lot of things that we bring in from there so you know i'm i'm from a more kind of metal and punk background i suppose so one of the things i put my foot down was um the songs can't be too long and that's one of the things that you know happens in metal you get these sagas that are like seven eight minutes mm. because you wanted to keep the yeah. energy you'll notice with symphonic metal um, you'll notice with symphonic metal like Nightwish that songs are generally quite long. Yeah. I mean, 24 minutes. Greatest show on earth. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So um, <laughs> our, our tracks aim, aim to kind of not really cross the four, four and a half minute mark. Wow. Um, I mean, that's, that's then, unusual then, though. Yeah. 
It is, it is. It's, so that's when, when kind of we have these interviews and people tell us, oh, you're, you're symphonic death metal or folk metal. It, it feels sometimes a little bit uncomfortable because mm. you're not quite that. But mm. at the same time, you don't want to open an interview going, oh, we don't not defined by labels because then you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the audience gets lost, right? It sounds yeah. pretentious, really. Yeah, yeah. So we're taking, we're taking what we can learn from folk metal. We're trying to keep the songs short-ish and to the point. Then we have trade-offs between, okay, we don't want the song to be too repetitive. So it's going to have different elements in it. But then do we have enough time to repeat each element so it sounds like it's structured and not just, you know, chaos? Because, you know, jazz is not necessarily one of the stronger influences in our music. So, you know, we don't yeah, want to ja- Jazz is complete and utter chaos. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to keep some of the structure associated both with classical music and with metal. I mean, that's, that's interesting. But we'll, we'll have another uh, um, video cast podcast in about a year's time, two years time and, and, see, and see where Bring to Bear is. <laughs> there might be a concept album that's, you know, got 50 minute songs on yeah. there or something. Who knows? Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. If we, make, if we ever make a concept album, we'll be cut up in, I think, in chapters, which are about four or five minutes long. Right? So, <laughs> that's um, a lot of it's chapters. It's pretty key. It's, <laughs> I mean, especially in the digital age, it's pretty key that each song you release stands on its own um, because it, people no longer necessarily consume albums from beginning to end. So concept mm. albums can struggle a little bit. You know, mm. people will pick up songs one at a time. Mm. So I think it's worth keeping that in mind. You don't have to be constrained by it, but you, you want to be aware of how people are going to consume your art, basically. I, th- I think that's what I, I had the biggest problem with um listening to somebody mentioned to me listen to evergrey they didn't say what album they just said listen to evergrey and, and i i don't know, obviously I, I chose the wrong album because it just went completely over my head and was a concept album and i was like i i just don't get what i'm listening to it just kind of put me off listening to them and then somebody mentioned again listen to the latest album it's really good it's not a concept album it's really good and i didn't i enjoyed it so it just goes to show concept album you've really got to have a a, a really devoted bass fan that are gonna you know listen to your music no matter what and love your music and concentrate on the music so i think you guys are doing it absolutely correct um four minute songs Obviously, it's helpful on the radio as well to get radio play, that sort of thing. Being a radio DJ, I, I totally get that. I totally understand that. So, um, and, and by the way, I look forward to playing your music. And I, I believe I can play it Thursday? Internet time yesterday? <laughs> Internet time yesterday. <laughs> Internet time yesterday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I get to play it. And I'm, I'm I, going to be amongst a whole bunch of new music so uh, I, i'm sure it's going to fit well and i've listened to it obviously and and i like it so i mean that's a good thing so um what, what happens now after the ep um are you guys looking at doing a full length album immediately afterwards because it's usually what a, a single then the ep or or whatever We've got a bit of a different path and that is because we formed during lockdown we formed remotely so the first time we ever played together was when we were in the studio recording this album right um so we have a couple more tracks that are either already recorded which will be being released piecemeal or they're in the works that will be at that point being recorded but really i think our main priority is to get out and get gigging so we don't want to be just an internet band and this is the thing that we haven't done yet Right. so as soon as these um recordings hit the ground and the restrictions after covid start getting lifted We'll be using them to try. How's, and get how's everything back. over there with with in terms of gigs and and venues opening up and all that sort of stuff? Slow is probably the word to describe it. it, it music's still not. You guys haven't had the third wave well, yet, have you? The government's just announced. We're kind of in a third wave at the moment, but um, because it's summer, the government's decided to open things up and just see what happens. <laughs> and they actually announced last night. Uh, hey, look, I've got an Monday AK-47. Night. I don't know if it works, but let's point it at the audience and see what happens. I mean, oh, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous yeah. going down that road. But they, they, announced, um, they announced Monday this week that everything is opening up from the 19th of July. So right. gigs are going to start happening again. In, okay, in good. Well, that's, well at, least, at least that's... So we'll have some opportunities. Well, at least exactly, yeah. I mean, at least at least you got that happening, and venues are going to start opening up. At least you you're headed in the right direction. So that that that's a good mm. thing. 
and I hope it uh, I hope it remains open for you guys. We went through it, um, open close with level four again, and shit's kicking off in South Africa. So it's it, yeah. I hope I hope you guys are safe. That's that's the main thing. So um, no full length album just yet. Is there new material no. that's been written? Yeah, so the, we're not looking at actually releasing a full length because, you know, that usually takes one to two years to write and record and produce and all of that to get it ready for release. Yeah. And we don't actually want to keep people waiting that long for the next new material. Um, mm -hmm. we, we want to work on it uh, in a more steady manner. So we'd rather release fewer tracks at a time so people have more to look forward to. It seems to be, a, that's um, what a lot of bands are doing these days. They, they, they are releasing a lot of more singles rather than even EPs. They just seem, to, uh, there's some bands that I see that like yeah. seven or eight singles. It's like, well, why don't you just put out a fucking album? And that was all within a year. Well, I mean, the, the way that music is consumed these days, yeah. it's all streamed and whatnot. Yeah. There's actually no point to release an album. Yeah. No, you're even absolutely spot on. Yeah. You're absolutely spot on there. Yeah, Ian, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, even Nailed the CP level is kind of related to us doing gigs because you, when you're gigging, you want a physical carrier with some songs in it. And that's the only real context we're thinking when we're thinking about how to group these songs together. Otherwise, the catalog is available you know, whether it's three or 30 songs, they're all going to be in the same place. Yep. I think the landscape of the music business has changed completely uh, since since 2020, in fact, probably even before. But I mean, it's been in a steady decline, I think, in one way or another, at least tangible holding CDs and things like that uh, certainly changed. But um, yeah, guys, we are, we are fast running out of time. So um, I'm glad at least lockdown has been lifted for you guys soon and you'll get out and do gigs and get into a practice room and share the sweat and and have a good time and and i wish you but all of you guys um the best of luck and bring to bear i i think it's one to watch definitely from a personal point of view i'm very eager to see what happens with you guys and, and i've got you guys on social so uh best of luck man uh you know miss this COVID madness that we're all in and this pandemic and everything uh, I wish you all the best, and and the single is awesome. The Shadow Ruse is out now. You can get it on all your digital platforms. Bandcamp first, people. Bandcamp. Everything in the link in the description below. Support the artist direct. And that's what you got to do. And get in touch with them on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and wherever the hell they are. Just support them as much as you possibly can. Whatever you can afford or not even afford, just do it. It makes absolute sense. So, so Krista and Ian, I, I wish you both um, the best of luck, man. Thank you so much for taking the time out during the week to to have a chat with me, and um, I wish you all the best and good luck with the single. Thanks Thank you very much. much. It's an absolute pleasure, guys. Keep well, keep safe.